So here in New York, police arrested eight illegal aliens on charges of attempted murder, drugs, theft, trespassing, and child endangerment. And while that sounds like the usual big city mayhem or a typical flight on spirit air, <laughs> what happened after shows you why you get a whole lot of crime when you take away the punishment. Cops on a gun run in the Bronx saw a man standing in a driveway pointing a pistol at another man. They chased the perp into the home's basement, where a subsequent search warrant netted cocaine, ketamine, and four more guns. There was also a seven-year-old child living there. I doubt those guns and drugs were the kids, but if they were, he is so grounded. <laughs> As it turns out, the occupants were illegals from Venezuela, squatters who the landlord had been in court trying to evict. The cops arrested all of them, including the original perp, who had an open attempted murder case. Another was out on bail on a loaded gun charge. Suffice to say, this was not a meeting of Oprah's book club. But before you could shout to fund the cops three times in a mirror, the judge cut loose six of the thugs, including the man who was out on the previous gun charge. As of now, at least six of the squatters are back in the basement. Fortunately, students at Vanderbilt are already delivering them tampons. <laughs> so it's the same question I ask when I wake up in a Port Authority restroom. How did we get here? <laughs> when the hell are Democrats going to finally admit that they got a problem? And it's them. Look no further than Carl Heasty, the head of the New York State Assembly. Heasty was the one of the so-called brains behind New York's bail reforms which have been emulated across the nation and have been universally successful if your metric is body count. This guy has more blood on his hands than Doogie Hauser after an 18-hour shift. <laughs> Heasty recently shot down a proposal for a law strengthening penalties against those who attack retail workers. Quote, I just don't believe raising penalties is ever a deterrent on crime. Heasty said that with a straight and chinless face. Yeah. So if there really is a Mount Olympus of stupid, I think we found our Zeus. This guy believes punishing wrongdoers doesn't work. Where does he get his research? It's human nature. Denying the reality of consequences because you don't believe in deterrence is like denying intelligence because you're stupid. <laughs> Was he ever a kid? If his parents never slapped him then, can we ask them to slap him now? Does he not realize that even animals train their young away from bad behavior through punishment? Hell, even single-cell blobs recoil from discomforts. <laughs> the phrase F around and find out is not just an expression, it's life. If someone continues to do bad things, they eventually face the consequences. Even the craziest of street crazies know this. That's why they never try to push someone the size of Tyrus in front of the subway. They're not that crazy. Heasty continued, quote, if you just keep dealing with the penalties, what happens after people get arrested? You're still worrying about what happens after something has already happened. Yeah, what happens is easy to see for anyone who doesn't sleep with their head inside a dry cleaning bag. The dirtbag's in jail where he can't commit more crimes. And aspiring dirtbags see that and think, you know, I don't want to be in jail either. I heard they have substandard Wi-Fi. But in this jackass's mind, why should victims get upset when their attackers are freed? The crime already happened. Look, we all know there are people out there just incapable of rational thought. But the fact, <laughs> the fact that this guy... Oh, oh. The fact that this guy is one of the most powerful people in New York State has me contemplating migrating myself to Venezuela or even Chicago. In the mainstream media, of course, the story received about as much coverage as that thong I wore at Liberace's funeral. <laughs> but if there's no disincentive for this behavior, it'll only go further. No penalties for invading the border, no penalties for gun possession, for robbery, assault, or slinging dope. Who do these guys have to misgender to face jail time? So while the rest of us are held captive to progressive delusions about crime and no punishment, rest assured there are many who see no problem here. And applying the same logic now to kids. In Boston, legislation is being proposed by racial justice advocates to stop suspending misbehaving students. Sam Adams must be turning over in his keg. So let's translate that. 
Let's teach kids as early as possible that bad behavior has no consequences. It sounds bad, but I guess in today's world, they're just getting prepared for life under Democrats. Let's welcome tonight's guest for April Fools. His ex-wife said she wanted him back. Comedian Jamie Lissa. Mr. Clean called and said he wanted his head back. Former acting attorney general Matt Whitaker. She's lean, pristine, and gets mistaken for a teen. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Cat Toops. And his arms aren't allowed through TSA checkpoints. New York Times bestselling author and comedian and former NWA world champion Tyler. You know, Jamie, I have to ask you, in the world of incentives and disincentives, mm -hmm. you weren't you were homeless and you didn't resort to squatting. That's right. You follow the law. Why did you do that? I would squat just to use the bathroom, <laughs> but never would I go in someone's house. Oh, nice of you. Um, this guy's so wrong. Mm. Harsh punishment does deter behavior. It's just a fact. Like, I would never get married again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know what? I think it, it does get a little bit like I was a psycho I was a psychology major, and I remember I remember learning about B.F. Skinner. By the way, if you're a psychology major, you can you know there are options. You could become a comedian, or you could go back to school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like you, like I think that having no deterrent whatsoever, I think you could make a criminal out of someone that wasn't gonna be a criminal. Like if you said like, oh, Lululemon, you can steal from there. I think someone that was never gonna do it might go like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna steal. Like I, on the other end, I think it, it's a little more foggy, but I think it could. May, I, I was at a Target the other day, mm -hmm. and I was sitting on the bench out in front of the Target, and I saw a man steal a three boxes that were a desktop computer. Mm -hmm. Just ran out, just like you hear about happening. I saw it happen. And he ran out with a, by the way, that's how you know uh, when someone's stealing something, if they're running with a desktop computer. Like, you're not even supposed to walk yeah. with a desktop computer. <laughs> and he ran outside and I immediately got my phone and I was like, I'm gonna record this and like get views or whatever and have people see what's going on. And the guy stealing the computer gave me a look that like scared the, life out of me, like I was like, oh my God, what if he has a gun? Like, what am I, who cares mm -hmm. if they steal? And when I took my phone I, and I stopped pretending like I was recording and I picked it up and I was like, hey man, they're giving away free computers at Target. <laughs> I just pretended it was like a sale. But I do believe that even this guy I saw might not have done it if he didn't know yeah. that you could just like get away. Like That was a really long story. Yeah. It's For just, a um, moderate to mild payoff. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue maybe, maybe no payoff. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> It does make me mad though. People get free stuff from Lululemon, and the stuff is so expensive. Like, I bought a pair of just comfortable pants the other day. They were, they were like $120. They're mm. they're so comfortable. They're so comfortable. I feel like I'm at an age where, I like I'm I don't think about getting into other girls' pants anymore. I just can't wait to get into my own pants. <laughs> okay. All right. Matt, that was, uh, you know what? He's trying. It was cathartic for him, anyway. Nobody <laughs> 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 borrow his pants ever, though. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mr. Whitaker, what is it about the left that rejects the idea of incentives and consequences? Because these feel like principles. They're like first principles. They're like almost born in you. They are, and they're also making it much harder for law enforcement to do their job. I mean, if you think about this revolving door in some of these places like New York, where, you know, these gentlemen that were squatting, let's call them gentlemen, mm -hmm. uh, one of them had a, a prior attempted murder uh, yes. where they just couldn't prove the case on him because the person that he shot wouldn't cooperate with law enforcement. Another one had, uh, you know, a prior gun charge, a pending gun charge, yeah. was let out. Um, and then the, buried in that story was... The landlord was having a hard time kicking them out from squatting because they'd been in there longer than 30 days. Yeah. I mean, what? And, and meanwhile, all of uh, the you know razors are behind glass and, and much of in the convenience stores here in New York. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I don't know how anybody lives here. I'm you know thank God I can go back to Des Moines, Iowa after this. Yeah. Oh wait, so you're not going to be staying at my place tonight? <laughs> nope. I got that fold-out bed for you, Matt. It's very comfortable, but it's not my size. I know. Nothing is your size, you big lug. All right, cat. <laughs> So I want to go back to the mad question about this rejection of incentives, okay? So I imagine when a left-winger drives to his left-wing think tank, he would probably take the shortest, safest route because anything else would lead to consequences. Why should they suspend the common sense of real life 
when it comes to something more important, which is life or death. Well, I think that incentives play a role in all of this, right? Even if, when people come here in the first place, I think that we wouldn't have this issue if we didn't just give free things mm -hmm. to people who come here. And the 30 day, I, like, can we just stop that? Yes. Like, yes. does anybody like that except people who are squatting in homes? Right. These are pro squatting it, laws. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. And, and these people are also very, very stupid. Mm -hmm. they, they, like, I'm all for the Second Amendment, but I don't think they take gun safety very seriously no. in this home <laughs> because the stuff they found, okay, like, they're doing powerful hallucinogenic dissociative drugs around a bunch of loaded weapons. Mm -hmm. You're got to be stupid to do that. Mm -hmm. Very dumb. Yes. I would go out on a limb and say that is not being safety conscious. They, they uh, wouldn't even bring that up in a gun course because they'd assume that you knew that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, chapter 7, if you're yeah. high, yes. Yes. Don't, don't play with your gun. When you, if you don't do ketamine around three loaded guns. Yes. <laughs> you know, Tyrus, the irony is we have no consequences for people who believe there are no consequences. <laughs> well, here's... I've been... Because we've, we've... This was a horse we'd have shot it already. But yes. here, here, here we go. What I think we have here is a failure to communicate because of, we have two very different philosophies. Mm -hmm. We believe in the system to keep people from eating each other. The left seems to think the system's the bad guy and the human beings are good mm -hmm. and they just need a chance, so we'll take away all the rules. I invite them to try the same thinking at the zoo. Mm -hmm. okay? You see the poor silverback gorilla sitting in his cage and he's angry and throwing stuff around. It's not him. It's his environment. So have, let's go with Bragg, the DA. Have him bring said gorilla home with him mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Yes. So when both his arms are ripped out of his socket, mm -hmm. then he'll be like, you know what? I think these gorillas are dangerous. <laughs> it's not the zoo. So the same thing is happening here where they think people are good until they show up at their house with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, we need to change the laws. <laughs> The guy in Oregon, the governor in Oregon was like, yeah. oh boy, he changed. You know why? Because it was his ass they were going after when he tried. I'm going to go outside and talk to them. Mm -hmm. No matter what I say, don't let me in. He was worse than Gene Wilder, like, open the <laughs> or get me out of these people are crazy. <laughs> Human beings are bad. Mm -hmm. Horrible. And that's why we have laws in place and Bibles in place and parents in place to try to keep them from being horrible because... Humans eat each other, rape each other, rob each other at the drop of a hat. I don't know why we're like this, but it's part of who we are, and law is the only thing they keep it. Like, I get upset at people and think, man, Jamie's joke bothered me about pants. I'm going to choke him for a while. <laughs> but I won't do it because I know I can go to jail for that <laughs> But if I hear tomorrow that choking is my right yeah. as a press black man, all y'all better get turtlenecks and neck guards. <laughs> like, that's just... <laughs> Thank God for laws, Jamie. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.